Greetings, Charles County. My name is Jennifer Harris, and I'm the Chief of Media Services for Charles County Government. I'm also the Designated Public Information Officer for this COVID-19 emergency. Today, I have a very special uh, update for you directly from our Board of County Commissioners. Uh, today is Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. The latest statistics in Charles County regarding coronavirus cases is 292 positive cases now confirmed. So as we've said, every time we get on the air, this is a uh, continuing to be an escalating emergency. And the, earlier today, our Board of County Commissioners met an emergency session to consider uh, a special order that would help uh, improve and, and expand the uh, public safety aspects of this emergency. So I'm going to let them talk today. I've got Commissioner President Collins. Commissioner Stewart, Commissioner Coates, and Commissioner Bowling joining me by phone. Thank you all for doing this. I'm going to take it one by one um, so we can talk a little bit more about what's in this order and what the public can expect starting tomorrow. Commissioner President Collins, let's start with you. Um, can you talk a little bit about what this special order is and what it's going to require? Absolutely. And I'll begin by uh, reminding our uh, residents that um, in terms of an actual state of emergency, on March the 17th, uh, I, under my signature, signed uh, and declared a state of emergency in Charles County. On April the 7th, the Board of County Commissioners extended that period of what would have been 30 days under my signature to um, an indefinite period where the county will act under a state of emergency. What we signed off on today um, and what will be in effect beginning April the 15th, which is this Wednesday, the public will be required to wear face coverings in grocery stores, pharmacies, retail establishments, and on public transportation. Um, the order is aimed at protecting our shoppers, employees, drivers, and passengers from the spread of COVID-19. Uh, face covering can be uh, homemade um, cloth mask, a scarf, a bandana, or other means of snugly covering the mouth and nose. So you do have some flexibility um, as a public um, member. Um, the purpose of this measure is to keep all of our citizens safe. Um, obviously, we will be working directly with the health department to ensure um, that it is um, uh, followed um, as strictly as possible, but we understand that we're not trying to put any of our residents, you know, in, a, in any state of difficulty. We're doing this um, out of the abundance of care for the health of all of our citizens. Well, thank you for sharing that, Commissioner President. I know that there's been conflicting advice as this emergency has continued to unfold and that... Um, a lot of uh, the information is changing. Initially, it was only people who are sick should wear a face mask, but now we're understanding that so many people are asymptomatic that they may um, spread the virus to others without even knowing it. So these face masks are really intended to protect everybody at this point, and that's why we're asking the public to comply with this order. Let's shift to uh, Commissioner Stewart. Uh, Commissioner Stewart, I know you wanted to share some detailed information about children and about um, masks that should be used, and you've even sewn your own masks, so I'd love to hear more about that, as well as um, how businesses can implement this order. Yes, thanks, Jen. Now, it's important for parents to remember that masks are not advised for children under two years of age or for people who have difficulty breathing. Masks made for use in healthcare settings, such as the N95 masks that we've heard so much about, should be reserved for healthcare workers. Although there is no civil or criminal penalty for shoppers, businesses have the right to turn away customers. And yes, then I have began to make masks for myself, my family, and some friends, understanding that it's important that as we go out in the public for essential only that we should have the face covering. Now, as we go out in the community and to businesses for our essential trips, it's important for our residents to remember that businesses are doing their best to protect their employees and the residents. Now, with this directive, 
businesses are required to provide face coverings for employees, whether the employees interact with customers or not. Employees should wear their face coverings to protect themselves and customers. In addition, employees should be provided with access to clean and sanitary restrooms, which are stocked with cleaning products such as soap, water, and hand sanitizer. Employees must be allowed to wash their hands every 30 minutes at a minimum. Thank you, Commissioner Stewart. So this really just reinforces all of the things we've been saying all along. Wash your hands, keep an appropriate distance, and cover your nose and mouth to prevent the spread of the virus. And it, it just reiterates that everybody has a role to play in preventing the spread. Now, I want to uh, emphasize a point that you made about essential trips and remind everybody that essential trips mean just that. Essential um. trips to get groceries, uh, your uh, medical care, and any other medicines you might need. But we're really encouraging people to avoid trips just out and about every day. Try to limit them to once a week if you really can. And with that in mind, uh, Commissioner Coates, can you talk a little bit more about um, how the health order would apply to businesses who are trying to, you know, uh, avoid capacity issues and, and increase social distancing? I know that the public has a part to play in that by limiting their trips, but what can businesses do to help implement the uh, details of this order? Hi, uh, yes, Jen. Thank you so much. Um, along with the uh, mask and face coverings, um, the health order also requires businesses to establish and enforce capacity limits by allowing a smaller number of customers in the store at any given time. We do know that uh, some of our establishments are practicing social distancing, if you will, and that's a good thing. Um, but we want to make sure that we reiterate that businesses are required to have enough space so customers waiting in line can practice physical distancing at least six feet. So that's very, very important to helping to curb this uh, pandemic. Thank you, Jen. Absolutely. So if you're seeing those um, markings on the floor in the grocery store or they're directing you certain directions when you're going to the grocery store aisles, those are things to be mindful of. It helps the traffic flow. It keeps social distancing in effect. So really just asking everybody to have patience as we all adapt to new ways of conducting our business when we are out and about. And with that, I'm going to shift to Commissioner Bowling for just a final few details. Um, and it covers a variety of, of, of different elements of this order, but um, could you talk in a little bit more about the safety measures aimed at protecting our workers and shoppers as we try to implement the physical distancing measures? I sure can. Thanks, Jen, for uh, letting me speak on here today. Um, other than other safety measures that we are aiming to have put in place to protect workers and shoppers include uh, implementing physical distancing measures for workers, customers, and visitors, but making sure that when people come patronize the business that they are adhering to the uh, distancing rules and just kindly reminders to them, maybe placing markers on the floor or, or signs up in your business, letting them know that these are the things we're putting in place to try to make it safer for them, not only them, but the, the people you have employed at your business. Uh, business can also share equipment such as baskets and hand carts and use those things um, to be sanitized, make sure we're sanitizing, make sure we're sanitizing where people are putting their hands and when, when your uh, employees are putting the baskets back, make, make a routine of, of wiping them down and making sure that they're clean. Uh, one thing you can use is either uh, the, the disinfectant wipes or alcohol swabs. To use. Um, it's also encouraged for businesses to install clear physical barriers between cashiers and customers where possible. I was in a business the other day in a little country mm -hmm. store down there where I live, and they put up a barrier where their deli portion is and where their register is so when people come up they can slide their money underneath and the uh, the barrier is providing an extra layer of defense against um, any type of breathing on or the COVID exposures for not only the the uh, customers but also the uh, employees because you know the customers come in one time the business and the employees are in there constantly coming in contact with numerous people so there's just a few things that folks can implement in their business and as they're going out and patronizing businesses. Thank you so much. I appreciate everyone's willingness to join on this call on very short notice. I know that 
it was approved today and becomes effective tomorrow. We want our public to know this um, doesn't need to be a challenging or difficult thing to do. We are going to be putting out a short video on how you can make your own homemade cloth mask. Our partners at the Charles County Department of Health came over to record that video message, and it's available on all of our platforms, which we encourage you to go for more information. That includes our website, charlescountymd.gov. That includes social media, our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages. We're also posting this information on Nextdoor. If you're following us there, our agency representative is providing updates. We have this information on our CCGTV Channel 95 Comcast and Channel 10 on Verizon, so you can watch it there. We're also going to be sending out an e-newsletter and a citizen notification by text and email to let everybody know how they can, A, comply with this order, and B, what the order actually is requesting the public to do. And really, at the end of the day, it's about everybody taking those small actions that will make such a difference in flattening the curve. So thanks to our Board of County Commissioners for joining us today by phone. Please continue to stay tuned to all of our communication platforms as this is an evolving situation, and we really appreciate everybody's patience and and willingness to do their part as we continue to fight COVID-19. Thank you for listening or watching today. Music